Perfect. Well, we can't all be crocodile Dundee types, but if you feel you need to up your butch quota, then try this. Grr. It's the Nissan Patrol, and in parts of the world where both the terrain and people can get seriously roughy tufty, it's seen as being one of the best full size luxury off roaders. Which on our country roads can lead to a bit of a problem. And they're quite narrow. Ah, um. Ah, I just. Uh, hello? Is there anyone around? I can't. Um, no. It doesn't make any attempt to hide the fact that it is massive. Seriously, you might as well get up in the morning, wander downstairs to the kitchen, put the kettle on and start the house and pull away on the school run with the kids still in bed. It is that big. Three litre direct injection diesel up front. Nissan used pretty clever technology to squeeze every last ounce of power out of it. Boy, do they need it because there is a huge amount of car to move along here. You're very much aware of the unsprung weight, the weight of the wheels and the suspension and the brakes, all the bits that are after the suspension springs, which makes it feel rather ponderous. That said, for something of this size, well, it ain't bad. It's got adjustable stabiliser at the back on the anti-roll bar, which means when you're driving on the road, you can switch it on and it'll stabilise out some of that wobble and roll. As soon as you go off-road, you don't want that, so you can switch it off. And that gives you a hint. It might look big and brutal, but it is but it does have on board a huge amount of technology. Of course, one of the advantages of having a car as big as a football stadium is that you can fit loads of people in it, and with a third row of seats folded out at the back, you can get seven people in with ease. But it is very, very big, and you can feel rather lonely. Hello? Hello, is there anybody else in here at all? Hello? I'm lonely up here. At last, this is what I've been waiting for all day, my chance to put this thing through its test out here in the real world. Now, come on! Oh, my God, this is, this is so boring. Well, hey, come on, not everybody lives in the middle of the Andes or the Pyrenees. In fact, if ever you were to get into difficulty off-road, this thing is more than likely to get you out. That said, Let's be honest, we are talking mounting the curb outside the wine bar here, being the limit of its explorations. We've got electrically adjustable seats in pretty much every direction, air conditioning of course, electric windows, heated mirrors. We've also got a rather nifty electric compass, none of those nasty stick-on round ones. This one up here digitally gives me an indication as to where I'm going. I'd rather know what road I'm on, but it's nice to know I'm going west. If you really are determined to hit the rough stuff, it's got pretty much everything you could need. Obviously, it's switchable between two-wheel and four-wheel drive, and there is an extra low-ratio four-wheel drive gearbox if it gets extremely rough. If it gets even rougher than that, you've got a remotely switchable diff lock. Mmm, nice. Now, let's be honest. I don't suppose anybody ever bought one of these by accident. Oh, they said afterwards. Didn't realise it was an off-roader. Well, obviously it is. And if what you're after is an off-roader, capable of carrying seven people in luxury and comfort and towing the house they came out of, then this is it. Yours for about 32 grand. If, though, you're after a big luxury car, then you might be looking elsewhere. Still, it's certainly got presents. Right, that's enough macho nonsense. I need to get in touch with my feminine side. Somebody bring me on an MGF, I think.